Okay, so now let's take a look. What, what did we actually code up? Uh, well, we have only 20 points here. Let's, let's have a bit more points and see how this works. And actually, let's, let's make... Um, so this is called... Something I often use a naming convention in the files is that uh, there's something, 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 comp, and then there is a corresponding file with the same name up to here, and then it's plot. With the idea that sometimes computations take a long time, I mean, uh, they can take overnight or days sometimes, or at least even if they take like 30 minutes or 10 minutes, it's nicer to first compute and save the results, and then when you plot and, and modify the plot and make it as well visualized as possible, then it's nice not to have to compute all over again. So. The strategy here would be the same, so let's let's save this by the name plot, and then we have to start actually by loading the previous results. Um, let's just put it here. Show the results of deco nolla x. Zero one. Oh, con model plot. No, com. And here, load. And then, So now we have this x and convres. So let's see what happens with this. There is nothing which is very weird. Well, what is x? x is such and hmm. Hmm. Let's run it again. It should be xvec, of course. xvec should be saved. So let's run that. And now you see the warning directory already exists, but just ignore it. It doesn't, it doesn't matter at all. So actually here we have to take this xvec and vec. So now hopefully We see something like this, and it, I think, would be instructive to, first of all, have some, have some control over the plot, how it looks. Let's put here even two, and maybe it would be also nice to plot the original target, target f at xvec this maybe by uh, black line and this one with red line and hold on in between let's see okay uh, I would say we see two things First of all, uh, our a may be a bit too big because our function is spread out uh, pretty much hopelessly. And on the other hand, I think uh, our integration is not so accurate and we need, I think we need more points. Definitely we need more points uh, here in the integration and I think we could use also some more points here. Let's run it. It took a little bit more, oh, well, not too much more time. And now... So now the result looks a bit more smooth, although it seems to me that there is some weird... So I think uh, our integration is not really 
doing such a great job that there's something really weird going on. Uh, do we have... Hmm. But anyway, let's, let's uh, make this a bit smaller. Let's divide it by 10 and let's see what happens. Let's have here some more points and maybe here also some more points and see what happens. Okay, so now we are not destroying our signal as much as before because A is smaller so we have a more narrow point spread function. If we zoom in uh, it seems to be much more much more smooth this one but I think let's still have uh, let's take 10,000 points here a couple of more twice the points here compute now it already took <laughs> some half a second to compute and maybe we could even uh, thick line and thin line so this could be one let's see how this works Okay, looking like that. And I think we could make uh, A a little bit bigger, so had to have a bit more convolution to correct for. So maybe let's try something like 0, 4. Hmm. Maybe this is even a bit too much. Let's try. something like that. Okay, I think this could be something we can live with, uh, especially, especially since this large, large step has been quite drastically removed, so can we build it back up? And also we see here, you see this flat part here, it means that our normalization with the half disk area is correct. Yeah. So thank you for that, uh, especially because we didn't have to integrate this stupid integral. And also here it's kind of nice, we, there is something for us to correct even in the smooth part. So this could be a nice, nice uh, situation for us. And then um, we could make uh, a function let's let's do it from he here i'll save this with a new name so let's call this continuum model measurement and that will be a function now um, mm, evaluate the uh, continuum model uh, convolution. And I think we can steal from here these arguments, evaluation, evaluation point. Uh, real number in the interval from 0 to 1, because that's where we want to work, and returns value of, of uh, convolution between PSF and target f at point x. So we have a function, we have the result quant uh, mass at x, then let's check uh, 
x values are in the interval. So let's let's put it this way: uh, if uh, max ups x is bigger than zero, or minimum of Ups x and let's let's also drop this as a vector. Yeah, no, not really. Uh, just one second. Yeah. The the code script that we used earlier. Yes. Say the data is the dots. Yes. And we're loading to it with the function. Yes. Uh, but you said that those dots files are not necessary. Just students are confused ones. Not data. No, the confusing thing is to have. Uh, a folder called data instead of uh, saving the mat files into the same working folder but i don't want them there because there may be a big number of mat files resulting all the computations so then there will be so many uh, files in the same working folder so that's why i like to have a subfolder called data and save uh... oh, but it should be there oh you're right i mean this should be oh man this should be this should be there and we should save it there. Ah, oh, so many mistakes. So this one, we should... We should save it there, and also the plot function, where is it? This one. So also here. Because here in our working directly, so now the conv data is, is here, and I really don't want to have those there. I want to have them in the data folder. Huh. Failed to do so though, but anyway, let's let's correct. Let's correct now. So let's compute this one again. So now we should have the data here. So that was the confusing thing uh, to have this folder. Yeah, but now it's there and let's just keep using it throughout the course and let's not get confused by it. It will make things simpler because there can be, later there can be dozens of MAT files uh, in this area. It's better than they are not here. That's the only thing. Maybe I'm confusing more with uh, my explanations than actual, <laughs> actual uh, deeds. Anyway, mm, what are we doing? Yes, this measurement thing. So now we want to check that the x values are in the interval. So the minimum should be if max is more than one, and or if minimum is more less than zero, then uh, of x should be in the interval zero to one like this, then load the results, and then mm, evaluate the function using interpolation. So what happens here is that, uh, think, yes? I think you have the or sign, only yeah. one there. Uh, this if max Should be yeah. two. Yeah, I mean, I mean. Here, you think yeah. it's two? I don't know, but usually. Okay, can be okay. I think and I think one works. Yeah. I don't know if this is how I read the code. Mm -hmm. So I think you said min of this. I cannot be like under zero. Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> yes. I was kind of thinking that if someone is feeding complex vectors of me, let's not care about complex yes, things. Yeah. Let's stick with the simple things. <laughs> Excellent. So now maybe it's more reasonable. There is also a right parenthesis in the minimum. So there's one too much in front of us. So let's see. Oh, this is okay. This is okay. 
Okay, I think I think the parentheses are right. Whew. Okay, and then uh, we use interpolation. And interpolation works like this. We give uh, the interp one function, we give it a function, evaluation points and a function. So these are the points and this function is given at those points and then we want to know the values of the function at some other points, in this case the x, that is the argument. And then we can also choose how to do the interpolation. There are several uh, options, for example, nearest neighbor, which gives kind of a discontinuous option. There is a linear one that uses just linearly between the known points. I think we could, we could do spline, which, which gives a, a continuously differentiable approximation. Because theoretically we know that our function should be I think it should be continuously differentiable, so this should be quite okay. So now I think we should be able to plot this measurement. Mm. So actually I think we can go on and make uh, our function that finally creates our continuum model data vector. That's what we have been now uh, aiming for. So now let's um, uh, let's say simulate uh, simulate noisy data from the continuum model. Of convolution. So now uh, our goal is first of all choose number of data points. And now remember that in this part of uh, phase of the course we are working with measurement models uh, with with n, uh, I mean, our m and and final result f are both vectors in R n, so that's the n we we shall be using. So let's, for example, let's take sixty four points to start with. That's something we can change later, and. Mm, then. Evaluate ideal data. So M then is. Oh, what should we call this? Let's call this uh, Deco 02, and let's call this uh, data comp. So now we are computing the data which we want to invert later. So we are simulating continuum model data. And here ideal means not noisy. So then we have our function uh, construct data points So now we want to construct these points, these ones here. So uh, so the x vec is. Mm, let's see what it is. It should be at least we need one over n. That's the step between the points. The first one needs to be 
zero, zero, and then uh, we want all together n points, so this should be n minus one. So I think these are our x points where we want to evaluate. And so we evaluate it here. Then let's see how this looks like. Let's see how this looks like. Uh, And actually, I want to also plot our uh, actual measurement without um, without sampling at those points to compare with. So let's take fine x points from zero to one, and with quite many points. So let's first plot uh, fine x, and then this. Uh, Conv meas at those points. This in black. Then hold on and then plot our what we construct right here. We have this our x vec in 64 points in n points. Uh, let's plot uh, x vec and our m with black dots. Oh, conv, cont meas, it's not conv meas, it's, okay. Okay, so here we see uh, the function of a continuum variable, our, uh, psi convolution f, that function, this function right here is defined for every real number between 0 and 1 and we have simulated that one uh, with quite high accuracy and that I'm showing with this uh, continuous curve there. Let's actually have this, where do we have these plot files here? Uh, let's have these plot parameters and also we need marker size. Let's see what would be good. So here uh, let's call this thin line and this one with marker size. Let's take a new look. Okay now it's a bit clearer. And now we can, uh, of course, have more points if we want. This, of course, now depends on our measurement device at how many points can we sample. But this is something we will, we will take a look at when n becomes bigger in our inverse problem with the idea that when our computational model is uh, getting higher dimensional, everything should be uh, becoming more accurate as a general principle in computational mathematics and numerical analysis. Uh, we'll see a couple of strange little things happening there, uh, I, I uh, predict. And then let's evaluate noisy data. Let's again call it mn. And this is m plus noise. So noise uh, would be, let's again have this sigma, let's point 0 0.1 for example, 10% noise. Mm, noise would be sigma times rand n uh, size m. And here this is just m plus noise. And let's Plot it here in red.
Okay, our data is uh, rather noisy. Maybe we could use a little bit smaller standard deviation. Let's just put 1% noise. So you see they are a little bit randomly uh, scattered around the point where they should be. Uh, and now actually I think we could also, we could we could do these two in blue and we could also include our target F in black, let's say. So there's our uh, original signal function we would like to recover. However, I mean, as shown here, the target f is a function of a real variable. In a computer, how can we recover it? Uh, one of the options is similarly to what we did to the uh, convolution function to sample f at those very same points. So we could uh, Let me plot this at xvec, xvec, and so now I think maybe let's let's uh, move back to a little bit less points so the plot is not so busy. Maybe we can see better what's going on. So now there's a lot of information in this graph. Uh, let's see what's going on. So the black, black uh, function is our target that has jumps and all that. The black dots are the values of our target function at the grid points. Those are the ones we want to know. That's our goal in the inverse problem, to know the location of those black points. That's the goal. However, what we are given is the red points. So there are a couple of processes going on in the uh, construction of the red points. There is the continuum convolution between the point spread function and, and the target F function. That's the blue line. Then the blue line has been sampled at the grid points. Those are the blue dots. And then on top of that, there is some random noise in our measurement device, so we get the red dots. And now the thing is, from the red dots, we should get to the black dots with some computational method. That's the topic of the course. And now, uh, for that, we need to build uh, yet another model, uh, a computational model. I'll stop this video now here. And